is Sunshine, and this is the Playground Experience Sandbox Live Q&A edition. I have my lovely co-host here, Kathy D, and my other lovely co-host here, April Williams. <laughs> All right, so today's topic is dealing with the emotional roller coaster. Oh my God, this 99 portal here that we didn't have has really truly been like giving birth <laughs> and pushing, which is like the number nine, which also symbolizes that too. Um, to really anchor down, uh, you try to hold on. It feels like a tornado that's going around you with that wind force, and you're trying to anchor in. And you're like, I got this, I got this. In some kind of way, it still goes around you and around you. In some kind of way, you feel like, oh, I'm losing grip. Uh, you have to anchor down into this energies that we have. It's just like a roller coaster ride. And some things you find yourself that you kind of put your hands up on. And some things you feel like, oh, my God, I got the brace. I'm going to scream and yell my head off. And <laughs> all in the ear to the next person who's riding along with me. Ah! on this ride here um it's just been it's just been a lot but like i said it's it's been an examination we've been prepared for this that's the good thing we just have to go back into our toolbox of reserve and just remember what we have to use in order for us to weather this roller coaster rather the storm or this roller coaster ride how is it for you all what's going on with you all as far as with the I would like to um, exit the ride. Can okay. Someone... <laughs> <laughs> no, not I'd like to take small not. children by the hand, take all packages with you. <laughs> the, this no, nine nine able. portal, no freaking you joke. Was been... mm -mm. I am not happy. I mean, yeah. Let's be honest. This is this time capsule. I am very just processing out all the bullshit, and I'm just not okay with it. <laughs> But I have to be, right? We have to be. We get to be. I'm excited. It's happening for me, right? It is. <laughs> so, right. I can look at her with sarcasm. She understands my love. I think that's her secret language is sarcasm. <laughs> I, I'm fluent. Sarcasm and cuss. Those that's are my right. two fluent ones. I need a t-shirt right, for you. I'm going to get a t-shirt for you. Actually, I have one. It says I, li I run on cat. What is it? Caffeine, sarcasm, and inappropriate thoughts. What you say? <laughs> what you say? All right. <laughs> and it's really interesting too, because it seems like it's all tiny little irritating little things that add up to the why, dear Lord. <laughs> it is. Like I my birthday present that I bought myself finally came. And it's this really cute little, uh, I'll show it to you just because it's in arm's reach. And I will get my son from putting strawberries all over it. It's this little thing, right? And oh, how cool it comes with a, a little keyboard. But what's this oh. attachment? This doesn't match my phone. Of course it doesn't match my phone. Oh. My birthday was on the 12th of last month, almost 30 days later, and it's not even close to the match. So it's hilarious. Right? <laughs> <laughs> all the stuff to be efficient, but you're like, just a, a straw short. Yeah. <laughs> straw short of a bushel, I tell you, which makes no sense. Mm -hmm. But anyway. Hey, right now it does, though. That makes complete sense. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, for right now, that's the norm. That's the new norm. That's yeah, it's almost norm. like two tacos short of roast beef. So, you know, I just. <laughs> <laughs> I like oh, it that. all applies. Thanks. <laughs> Oh it does. And you know, you're so, you're so right with what you're saying about it. it's all this little stuff. And it's like, you know, we've been, we've been moving the, the burn on stuff off the bottom of that coffee pot, you know, using yeah. that analogy again. And now it's uh -huh. those little flaky things that you thought you got off and you pour it in the, and you look in the bottom of your cup and now they're floating there. Uh -huh. And it's, it's, it's like, it's almost like sand in your bed. If you've ever stayed at the beach, Okay. And you stay in a hotel and or, or you live at the beach and you have sand in your bed. Somehow, you know, you washed your feet, you took a shower, 
You don't know where it came from, but it's just a little bit of sand and it gets like right behind your knees, you know, in, in my case, in my hair, uh -huh. you know, and then it's just, it irritates you. And it just, you're like, where is it? I can't get to it. I don't know how to fix it. And, you know, that's kind of where we are right now. I'm thinking of it almost like you're comfortable, you're laying in, you just you got clean sheets, you just took your shower, you're all good to go, you're all cozy and you're ready to go to bed and then you're like, oh, I gotta go to the bathroom. Uh-huh. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but I just, I'm all wrapped up just like I'm supposed to and the lumps in the pillow are just perfect, but no. <laughs> mm -hmm. And then you lay there and wonder, how bad do I really have to go? <laughs> can I, can I at least make right yeah <laughs> two, two hours three hours at least that's like a nap yeah <laughs> that's all i really need right 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 <laughs> so yeah that is where we at the little nuances and i guess oh that's what's sorry i'm turning it up Go i'm having a, um for me i'm doing this cleanse right this 30 day huh? cleanse and it's very interesting because the timing of it and then the pressure because I don't know, you'll watch my past episodes and you'll notice, oh, these things she's talking about. Well, that's all me, people. No, um, it's not all me, but but I love to do the suppression of emotions with food. Who's with me? And so, yeah. <laughs> and so <laughs> all my comfort foods are off the table right now. Mm. So I'm in this place of like agitation with no like, and and then also taking the time to breathe to fill in that space to not put in another bad habit or another distraction that's going to okay. help me not peel off that layers. I was telling the ladies before we got on, I mean, I broke into tears twice today and I'm just like, wow. Oh, great. Cause I always approach it this way. It may sound slightly sarcastic, but oh, great. Yes. Something to look at, something to heal, something to clear out. But then I'm just like, but why now? <laughs> Why all this? And I can't even get my noodles to comfort myself. My noodles and cheese. <laughs> and the universe is saying, "Why not now? Why not now? <laughs> Perfect timing just to do that to her right now, where she has nothing. She just barely. <laughs> she's just depending on herself. This is the perfect time to say, "Why now? Here you go. Here you go, kiddo. How you like me now?" <laughs> and sometimes I do feel like it's tests, it's little tests for my higher selves to see if we can remain consistent mm -hmm. where our thoughts and our actions really do align mm -hmm. and how, how re they take, take the bull by the horns in terms of our emotions and our healing right. experience. Ooh, girl. I mean, don't get me wrong. This is a delicious, delicious, like whole nutrient, but feeding myself nutrients while I'm going through pain is creating different block, like um, how it's rebuilding in my brain, how it's restructuring, how my body is now speaking in a different language. Um, just by doing this detox, it's just been amazing. How are, how are you ladies handling, uh, we'll call it universal crunch time. <laughs> <laughs> A lot of dancing, a lot of music, a lot of meditation, a lot of sleeping. That's pretty much how I'm kind of pretty much doing that. It's just kind of a lot of trying to make myself to go back to my Zen space, uh, not to go back and use the old ways of how I handle things and say, is there a new way that I can actually handle things? Uh, no more internalizing and keeping um, thoughts and things inside bottled up, but also expressing it, but expressing it not in my famous infamous Aries way where it's burn everybody, burn everybody to hell, but more so of a lot less talk. I'm saying my piece. This is where I'm coming from. And you know that I mean business. So it's, it's, it's a difference. It's a difference of me really being able to vocalize and communicate. Uh, that's what I'm going through right now is now putting voice to things that I see that I no longer can sign up for, which at times I would not eternalize it, hold it in some kind of condition, the health would happen. Uh, and then with the kids again, trying to 
um, now starting with school, just trying to be able to um, deal with the go with the flow uh, and, you know, teach them patience too, because I think this is a great lesson for them to see us with this remote learning, it being very new. Um, they're saying everybody doesn't always have the answers to things. And I think that's something that kids need to kind of see that as well. And understanding that uh, at the same time, uh, you know, when people mess up or do something wrong, we have to give them empathy or give them courtesy at the same time. So uh, that's kind of pretty much where I am now is just really trying to deal with things differently instead of blowing off the handle like I usually do. Um, and it's, it's working, of course, I get kind of off, but then I have to have that inner dialogue with myself to say, okay, come on back, come on back. We're not going to handle it like this, remember? Yeah. But it's so easy to just kind of tell them off. No, we can't do that, <laughs> little birdie, no more. Why not? Because uh, we're trying to be grown up. We're trying to be spiritually more uh, mature. Okay. So can we do that tomorrow? No. I said we're doing it today. So that's kind of where I'm at now with the, the, the way the things are happening now with the energies is just really anchoring and doing a different way of um, handling things. What's happening with you, Kathy? Um, mine has actually been a lot of um, like my, my root thing that I've been working with was fear. And as I've gotten that up and moving, moving that energy and feeling so much better about it, I have found that slightly impatient now because the fear is what kept me back. And, um, but resentment, resentment has, is what has come up. Um, the way people treated me the way I, and resentment for myself, the way I let myself be treated. And, um, I, Louise Hayes has the most amazing exercise and it's called, um, retaliation. And you write it out, everything that you would want to do to that person to just get it out of your system and release. And you just release, you know, oh, if I could just tell them this, if I could, just, mm, you know, cast iron frying pan right there, you know, um, and then you burn it and it's gone. And, you, you know, you ask the universe to take it and just do away with it and to release that and transmute it into positive love and energy. And the release you have is amazing. And there's another exercise that she does before that with um, that. And that's, you know, you go through all the times you've been hurt and you think of the person and you bring that person to your mind. And if you're fine with it, if you, or you can't get a good picture of them, then you're good. You've released it. You're fine. Move on. But when that anger comes up, then is when you need to, you know, do that retaliation exercise and um, release some of that. But yeah, and that, and I've been having all kinds of like crazy dreams. And um, you guys know my partner in crime, uh, Benita and I have been seeing numbers, like ridiculous amounts of numbers. It is. Um, J just signs like all over the place and um, from people in the 3D that um, I guess like the best way to put it, they don't have a dog in the fight, but come up and have those little bits of words of wisdom or, you know, that little bit of information that was missing. But you've got to you've got to watch for it because the universe is throwing all this out amongst all this chaos. And I think like April said, some of this is a test that seeing, you know, are we going to listen to our higher selves? Are we listening to our intuition? Are we doing what we need to do to get through this stuff and then to kind of push away the chaos and let in the intuition? And I think that's, that's a lot of what's going on right now. Mm -hmm. It is. It, it, it. I, I appreciate what you're saying too about the, um, the resentments and all that, that deep cleansing of all of that, like just, I don't know, anger at the pattern, mm -hmm. at the patterning, the subconscious development, um, just really owning that and then switching it has seemed, seems like it's a theme. 
because that's what it sounds like for me. Even the people I'm talking to, you know, um, in day to day, we're all doing this this reset, and I'm really appreciate it now because it allows me to kind of gift my child that not having that experience, not having that. They're going to be able to have their own whatever they're creating, whatever space they need to, you know, because let's just say it, we're constantly evolving. We're constantly these works and uh, works in process, you know, so. Yeah. It is. And the kids right now, it's a, it's amazing to watch. Um, Helen has really been on point, like really on point. Um, with the things she's seeing, the things she's getting, but then also the drive and motivation she's having. Um, before it was kind of floundering. She knew what was coming in the future, but she didn't have the information in between to connect the dots. Mm -hmm. And now she does. And that kid's like on fire. It, it's ridiculous. So it's, um, it's really, it's, it's neat to watch and watch her and her friends and how they talk about, you know, intuition and how they talk about, um, you know, source and guides and angels, just as if it was nothing, you know, where before we were kind of like closet talking about it because, you know, the elders would get upset with us. You know, you don't talk about those kind of things. And now seeing this next generation that just talk about it freely and are kind of to the point to some people, you know, kind of like, oh, go scratch my butt. I don't, you know, I don't care. This is, this is what I believe and this is what I feel. And um, they have a way of saying it. And so um, it, it's kind of neat to sit back and watch that. And, and know as a mother that, you know, I had something to do with that. You know, I guess I'm, I'm not, you know, the burn on stuff at the bottom of the coffee pot. I, you know, I, I, I have, you know, you know, given my kids that guidance. Yeah. And it's beyond even, uh, it's, it's doing that. I, I kind of spoke on that a couple of playgrounds ago that again, if you surround and you find some of your friends that are on that same frequency, uh, you will be able to kind of speak freely about who you are as a person. And if you have parents who have raised you in that type of environment where they accept your gifts, that's a norm as well. You will also, again, too, that gives you power and authority to say, this is who I am. Rather you accept the way I'm presenting myself or my beliefs. Like I said, I have friends, even to this day, they're around me that they understand that's Bertina. If I love her, that goes a part of the whole package program. And a lot of these kids, I have seen that. I said that a couple of um, playgrounds ago that we were moving into that. This next generation could freely be able to talk about that because you can tell the lingo they're using, fluidity, asexual. It's like you're already speaking the twin flame language without uh -huh. the that. It's like, no, well, someday I might feel like cutting off all my hair, although I'm a girl, but this is how I'm feeling today. And next day I might go say, I want to go get some weed. So it's like, you know, they have that kind of fluidity. They already, this mindset, this new generation is already in lockstep with understanding what it is to be more spiritual and less on the uh, other ways of being systematic or the dogma or the old paradigms of things. They're more open and receptive to that. And that's great that I hear that. And again, like I said, that's kudos to you with parents that are opening and uh, very open and receptive of this gift that gives them a freedom to be able to do that. I always think about rich people and the difference between rich and when we're talking about poor and the different classes is, again, they are grown up with that, no limitations as far as money. Mm -hmm. I, anytime I want money, I can have access to it. Those that are in more of a lower um, poor or uh, lower consciousness, let's put it that way, of thinking is always a struggle. So you pass that on to them. But again, if you talk about spirituality uh, of doing that, it's just an open receptiveness. And so that's something that they can be able to pass on to other, their friends who are around them, their own generations as well. So I just think of that as just the same thing. That's just like um, people who are rich, that mentality, that open receptive that you can have access to anything versus the ones that have been where well, money is a struggle, blah, 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 and how you pass that on just in your environment and in your surroundings. So that's a great, and that's the kudos and hats off to you 
as a parent that is really giving her that nurturing environment, just like how my mom did with me as well about my gifts. It was just never, I just never did know. And I was like a person that had that mentality of the rich thing. It's like, I didn't know there's no things. Nobody else was walking around. You didn't have spiritual gifts. So that's a great thing that you're passing on to her. And that's a great thing that she's also showing her friends around her too, that freedom of expression. Rather you agree or not, it's against the curve, but still going out there and expressing what um, she feels in her heart and in her spirit that she needs to share. So that's a great thing. Thank God oh, yeah. my parents always knew I was special and never suppressed me. Yes, I forgot I'm on this one. I've been on Google Meets. I forget I can press things and show. <laughs> Thank God my parents always knew I was special and never suppressed me. Yes. Who was that? Did I miss someone while I was talking? Uh, TG was just kind of given an experience. She said, uh, driving to work yesterday morning, and I, yeah, a quick moment felt like the car or my body tilt. Um, it altered me. It didn't last, and the car in front of me didn't uh, do it. <laughs> so, yeah, I've we're been feeling that a lot. Like, you almost feel like it's such a hard download. Like they're sending informa information is coming in so hard that you feel almost like you got a sense of vertigo or something like that. It can yeah. get really, really intense right now. And it's oh, coming yeah. in waves. So just like allow it to embody. Like when you, when you don't resist that, it gives you the upgrade easier. And then you just start, to, you become aware, but not detached because there's a level of spiritual trauma or what's the word disassociation right yes mm -hmm. with when you're having all of these things and they're so new you don't necessarily know where to put it or how to categorize it so you resist it and it causes extra drama mm -hmm. extra drama well and now along with all the drama and the chaos and the the flakes floating in our coffee and everything um I have had an immense surge of gratitude, just an immense surge of gratitude and excitement. Don't know where it's coming from. You know, I mean, I know it's coming from source, of course, but <laughs> in, in what um, capacity, it's just, I am, I'm excited. I get up, let's go, let's do, I, you know, I got things to go and do. I am, I'm ready to go. and. Um, it is, and I don't know if some of this is, you know, having released that fear and getting that energy moving um, or what, but it has been um, that a lot of um, downloads. And like you said, April, it's where they're not, I mean, they're, they're pretty intense, but they're just coming in. And I think some of it is, you know, the, they say the veil now before it was thin, now it's lifted. And um just all kinds of, of things like that that have been happening. People coming back into my life or coming back into my life in a different aspect. Um, you know, uh, coming back in and wanting information on the, on the twin flame journey, people that I would have never, and I know this is bad, but never have ever said anything about my gifts to, or, you know, that I was a twin flame or, you know, explain 5d and 3d and have them get it. And they're coming and they're so open to it. And it's like, man, why wasn't I that open to it? <laughs> but, um, like so there's a lot of like really positive stuff that is coming in as well as you know some of this really heavy stuff it's equaling out and I, I just think um a lot of it is it's some of these final tests as we get closer to the end of the year because i mean it's september guys we're as we'd say in south carolina we're we're in the short rows you know when you're plowing you're in the short rows when you're almost done and that's where we are and um, there's some big, big, amazing things coming. And we're still getting these things thrown in at us to make us go, oh, wait a minute. What was that? That that wasn't, no, 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 no. You're not going to bring down my, my high or whatever. But, um, and we have to pull ourselves through that. You know, we can't, you know, there's no time to sit and kind of sulk with it. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Yeah, I, I said uh, kind of like that is um, in the video I talked about the examination time 
and how it is time for us that final exam. And sometimes when you take those tests, you get that question, you say, wait a damn second, I study for everything else, but that wasn't in my study guide. Now where that sneak on in? And so uh -huh. ways in which the universe will kind of sneak in one and say, oh, you thought you had, you had mastered it. <laughs> Let me throw that in there. Oh, wait a damn second. <laughs> wait a second, wait a second. I was not on page 99 and that was not on page 125. Where did this come in from the study guide of life? <laughs> so, yeah. yeah, that's it. You get in that. I'm in agreement with um, CPN. A lot of different dimensions. I could be sitting there and I see lights flashing or I call it where it looks like somebody takes the thread of the scene and they just pull it. And then all of a sudden you see this, like I can look and then all of a sudden it looks like somebody pull a thread and you can see light in between the scene there. It's almost like somebody just pulling thread and you say, oh, like the matrix. Yep. Mm -hmm. um, I see that lights, um, objects moving, seeing different things in things, layering in other dimensions. So yeah, that's been a lot of that has been happening. Uh, the road jumped the other day for me. I literally just watched it. It went flu. Uh -huh. And I'm sitting at a traffic light and I was like, and I glanced over at Helen. She goes, no, mm -mm, don't you say it. I, mm -mm, we're not even admitting we saw that. And I'm like, okay, I wasn't alone. <laughs> <laughs> a lot of like okay did i just do deja vu a little bit it's like okay i'm back okay now how did that plate get over there last time i seen the plate was right here okay what happened so a lot of that has been happening too uh as well yeah the timeline jumping it's it's been really intense um but there's something that keeps like calling to focus in on the now right especially when you're feeling the emotional roller coaster sometimes you're watching the roller coaster go by and your friend is right <laughs> sometimes you're on it yourself <laughs> but realizing that it's still it's still just a ride and eventually you'll be off of that ride and you can get on and go on something fun like the swings i like the swings <laughs> <laughs> i can control that <laughs> I can at least be on a level, even if I'm getting higher and it's getting kind of wild. At least I'm on this constant spin versus the, ooh. Uh -huh. Ms. Vera say you're looking yummy, honey. You're looking yummy. Uh, thank you. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> yes. So, um, I think she has that. I don't know what happened. Oh, she was talking about her time in Seattle, but I'm a different person. Okay. It's very interesting because I'm finding like there's uh, this property that I'm on, there's set different floors and different energies are moving through different parts of it. And so when you're in a certain space, it feels like a certain thing. And then you go through to another space, it's like you're going through a, weird, a crazy portal to another world. It's got a different kind of energy. There's a lot uh -huh. of like, it's just so much of this going on right now that I, 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 we, it's all unexplainable. It's all hilarious. And it's all beautiful in that way that we we're harnessing and starting to not necessarily con fully control, but dance with the energies a lot healthier than let's say five years ago or two mm -hmm. years ago, even a year ago, we can noticeably see how we're different. And we are literally changing from millisecond to millisecond right now. And so, I'm glad that we're able to have the conversation and cultivate it in a way that's actually understood, like communicated and understood versus communicated and feeling like you're not understood or communicated and you're not even being heard or acknowledged or someone's communicating to you and you're communicating to them, but your language is like, you know, you're going off in different places. It's, it's very interesting. And you could say the most esoteric concept and people will grasp it right now because everything mm -hmm. is so fluid. Everything is so molten change. Uh -huh. It's like deep, deep clearing, healing, and self-understanding, self-knowledge. Self it's just beautiful right now. Well, and what Carolina said, or was saying uh, about Crater Lake, if I remember right, isn't Crater Lake caused by a meteor? Wasn't that... I can't remember if it was a meteor or a volcano, but anything like that. I mean, I think being in those areas, there's definitely some different vibrations there and different energies that are 
you know, divine scent. And I think anytime that you're in any of those areas, you do get those different energies and, and you pick up on different things. I mean, heck, back in the 70s, even Jimmy Buffett talked about it, changes in latitude, changes in attitude. You know, we move around and the energies are different everywhere we go. So I, I completely, you know, agree with, you know, you're feeling the energy come in and out. You're seeing forms. And um, you said a forward tail and green white light. I, you could be, you could be seeing dragons, you know, and they say they're coming in right now to, to yeah. blow this stuff out of here and to burn it out. Like they're, they're kind of like the cleanup crew. They're the janitorial <laughs> section of, of the universe. You know, they're, they're getting rid of it. And then there's the water dragons, there's the, you know, air and the fire. So very easily you could. Yeah, I'm so glad you bring that up because I think one time one of the subscribers was like, I thought dragons was evil. And I was like, I don't know where you got that from. But Sir that Lancelot. Right. So they told you everything was evil. You, <laughs> yourself. Right. You brown, mm -hmm. you evil. Yes, <laughs> That's what they tried to tell you. <laughs> oh, I, I know my dragon. My dragon has got black or green eyes. Like, I know his name. I was like, oh, uh, no. That's not so. <laughs> They will. If they will reveal themselves, I think how it revealed itself to me was it played now Nicki Minaj saying like a dungeon dragon. And every mm -hmm. time I do that, that's when uh, my dragon appears. I mean, it's like I'm on the I'm on the really protective thing too as well uh, when that happens. Um, what else you say? Psychified professionals using what is that? Hold on, hold on. What, what what's what you're talking about? Hold on. What's uh, what's this? Uh, using the words like vibes, energy. Yeah. Oh, okay. Now they're coming into using vibes and energy. Okay. Oh yes. Okay. Yeah. Um. Mm. Welcome to my side of the of the planet. <laughs> yeah, and and being in that and being you know kind of looked at, especially being the uh, the mental ninja and stuff like that. Um when you use things like that, people look at you very odd and cause it's kind of like, well, you're supposed to be the scientific one, you know? Well, I'm sorry if that's what you're looking for. You need to go find somebody else. Cause I believe in angels and I believe in energy and I believe in vibes and, you know, fairies and, you know, all kinds of things. I think, you know, I think that's what people are starting to wake into um, is that the consciousness of science is a belief system. And so people are now being able to like, kind of see through that. Cause science itself like to make itself secular, I guess, because we're talking about it as a religion anyway. Science really secularized itself. So it tried to make itself like irrefutable or, you know, all X, Y, Z. But because science specifically stays away from spirit or any type of spiritual activity, it tried to give that as a loophole for it being separate and or better, but we're starting to find that they really just overlap, especially when you start getting into like quantum physics and, you know, um, just how we start talking about dimensional realities. All of us, at least a lot of us in the chat are knowing how to hop in and out. We're knowing that other entities and energies are now communicating with us, speaking with us, showing themselves. We got people in the chat having some really awesome stuff just appear but we're also needed to use discernment right because we were told to fear everything right it's evil it's bad it's crazy it's this it's that you're they're all gonna laugh at you you know <laughs> but now we're, at the point where we're all laughing together and everybody's laughing their ass off nobody knows really what's going on so let's just have the conversation anyway and so we're at uh -huh. that point where we're like we're all attired we all want to feel great we all want to live our best lives we all i mean that's what the one beautiful part about this whole situation with the pandemic is, is it put us all into the, we're all human beings in the level playing field and now we're concerned. And now we're starting to hear the squeaky wheels and all this other stuff, like the minority communities and um, the disenfranchised. We're starting to now talk about the children that are missing, um, the women that are missing. Like there's a huge amount of, um, black women being kidnapped and raped and murdered and like it's just crazy what we've been doing to ourselves and not looking at it because we want to suppress it we want to 
What's the word you said? Disassociate. Why do I keep disassociating for disassociating? Okay, okay, okay. <laughs> okay. Disassociating from disassociating? That's, a <laughs> that's an issue. That, that's beyond dissociation. That's just an issue. <laughs> but but we're we're cleaning house, and I'm glad that we're able to come together and even just talk about it and like just laugh, release that energy, cry. That was a really difficult one for me. I'm kind of proud of myself today. I gave myself a pat on the back for that. I was like, yeah, I'm gonna do it. I was gonna cry right now, and then I missed my my window for the bank. Anyway, <laughs> to do list. Sorry, y'all. I'll stay focused. I promise. <laughs> the well, you know, it, it's, you, you guys are talking about science and and what we're seeing and things um, with the hypnotherapy. As as I go in and um, as I'm working on my new program and stuff. I have found just some, some wonderful information like Thomas Jefferson tried to stop hypnotherapy from coming to the United States because he tried to have it looped under witchcraft. And it's, there's a whole, you know, like a whole thing about it. And it's quite interesting that it wasn't because they were poo pooing it. It was because they were scared of it and they didn't understand it. And it was working. And that's where so much of the fear that we run into with our beliefs, with our vibes, with our energy, when we talk about these things with our fairies, I love the CPN story about her and her daughter with the fairies. My mom and I used to, to watch fairies when I was little. And I always thought, Oh, well, that was just make believe. But you know, now looking back, no, we watched them dance and play in the rain. Um, those things were scary to people that either didn't have the ability to see them because they didn't believe kind of like Santa Claus. If you don't believe you won't see, you don't receive, you know, but, um, because it works, you tell somebody I'm going to manifest this and they're like, okay, whatever. But think about everybody that talks doom and gloom all the time. Oh, it's never going to get any better. You know, just the whole Eeyore kind of thing. I'm always going to be like, I'm always behind the eight ball. October is a horrible month for me. The worst things happen to me in October. Well, you know what? What happens? The worst things happen to them in October. They're always down. They're always out. They never, you know, get that. But when we turn it around and we manifest positive because we're in a higher vibe. And when you're in that high vibe, and this is something too, when you're in that high vibe and you're laughing and you're having fun and you're playing with that inner child and you are just really feeling good. That's when you need to manifest when you're at that level, because that's when things are just going to come in. And right now things are going to come in like gangbusters. And, um, I, I believe it was the, the last, when we did the eight, eight, the Lionsgate portal, it was David, a soul mission was talking about, um, we needed to be mindful of what we were asking for and really think about it before we did it. You know, is, is this something we really need or is this an ego thing? Mm -hmm. And so, yeah, yeah, we create with our beliefs most definitely and we attract positive. And it is when you just, you know, when you know what you know, what you know, when you're grateful for everything you have, good, bad or ugly. Um, but you're still, you know, in gratitude. I mean, the universe wants to, to shower things on you. Nowhere has it ever been written in, uh, I love Jupiter's line about the, the best selling book in the world. Does it say that you're supposed to be miserable or you're not supposed to have a good and profitable life? You know, so why not? We want everybody to take us at our word. Why not take him at his word? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And I found out also, um, for dealing with what's happening with the roller coaster rides now, it's just setting off with intentions that like really saying today is going to be a good day and just really mm -hmm. no matter what and just really sticking to that script that has really helped me to kind of set forth um, how the day goes. Um, that's been very helpful for me, especially uh, with my zealous mind um, to really go that way to set that. That's been a really, um, you're welcome, Blue Angel 777. Uh, to do that, and that's funny you mentioned about David. He's he's on here, uh, uh, nope. incognito. Is he? Well, yeah, you know. that's him. <laughs> I've blown your cover, David. But yeah, he's he's on here. When you said that, that's funny. He came in the room, 
at the auditorium at the same time you mentioned him. <laughs> <laughs> I called him in. I manifested him right here. Yeah, I play music too at the beginning. I dance. I dance and get myself ready to get move that energy, especially all that sitting that I'm doing. So now I make sure I kind of get that dance in uh, as well. Move all that energy from the heart throughout my whole body. So I make sure I start that off at the and beginning of the Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and that's and that's great. That's that's moving that energy. I think that's that's fantastic. And we probably need to during this time, especially with you know the nine nine portal, and then now we have the um, the new moon coming up on the seventeenth. So we're just going to have a lot of lot of energy just flowing and going, and we need to not be stagnant in our minds or in our bodies. We've got to, You know, we've got to move. We've got to you know, plan, we've got to, you know, make our, make our way, make our, whatever, our escape from whatever we're escaping from. Look at your baby. It doesn't look like you're saying, mommy, you look so serious. Smile, mommy, smile. <laughs> <laughs> Carolina What's was. What's interesting about. Oh, you're reading. Oh yeah. No, I was no, just going to say, she just asked about, about entities and why they come in. And, um, like my my thing flame. always, yeah, it's up a little bit further. It's like uh, a moth to a flame. Yeah. And they come in to tell you things. They come in to answer questions. Um, there's so many. You just have to ask them. And that's the thing with, a, you know, how can I help you? What are you here to tell me? Do you have some, Do you have something for me? And I think that's, and then the, they'll express why they're here. Yeah, because I, I need that. Well, I don't know. The good, the bad, or the indifferent. Um, <laughs> <you know. laughs> they come to them and present themselves. So if they're good, yes. Of course, they come to either protect or whatever. And you can always, you can not ask, you know, um, to kind of see and kind of feel. You're kind of pretty good at sensory. You can tell when someone is like, okay, this don't feel like this here to help me. <laughs> mm -hmm. I don't feel like you are. And so that, again, I have control of the universe. And then, again, I would say, tell them, you know, again, you're not here uh, right now. You're not welcome again. You have that power and authority to tell that thing to go away. They have to obey for them not to be in your space, uh, especially if you're shielding yourself and doing the work or whatever, then you can be able to tell them to go away. Uh, most of the time, if they're good, again, you can... Um, Ask them as well. If you feel that there's pretty much a uh, good vibration, you can ask, uh, why are they there? Um, pretty much they might kind of signal. They might show you numbers, a uh, symbol or something like that. Um, they'll talk to you and they'll tell them, uh, uh, or you can just feel like, no, it's love. Um, they tell me some of them, they might not even talk to you. They kind of just kind of maybe just there just to kind of be sensory around. So you kind of have to kind of gauge some of them, they have to kind of, well, they're around you, but I'm feeling also that they, it depends on what kind of state you're in. They might not kind of uh, reveal themselves to you either um, as well. So, you you know, you just kind of have to trust yourself and your intuition. To and sometimes there would be a distraction. If you're too much right. up in your head, sometimes they're just there to be a distraction and get you thinking, you know, about something else. Right. Yeah. And another thing we need to do right now, too, is to make sure that we are shielding up yes. and we are we're putting our protection on and not just I, I know my habit always was in, was in the morning. Now it's morning and evening. And if my when my kids come across my mind, I do it again. And it's interesting because I see their energy. It's like the energy in the bubble has drained down. So it's like they have to refill. And, yeah. Um, yeah, 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 yeah. I've I had somebody. I don't know who said that. They made sure you would do that to shield yourself, even at night when you go uh -huh. to sleep. And well. um, if you need like little guardian reminders, you know, because we're always kind of talking with our guardians, be they angels, archangels, ancestors, uh, spirit guides, spirit team, spirit animals. You know, you you got the whole spiritual realm covered. It's also a level of your you're leveling up, you know, because before you would have been too afraid to even interact. So that that's kind of like initiation rights to a certain mm -hmm. extent. 
but like like uh, divine unisouls is saying, <clears throat> divine sunshine. <laughs> sunshine got soul sealed. <laughs> that that lady over there, her. You are in. Ultimately, you are in control, and so it's up to you how you want to do what boundaries and if you want to explore that world and allow that to kind of come to you always work with protection always work with wisdom always work with discernment if they if you're talking to them and they say go jump off a bridge you probably shouldn't be talking to them <laughs> right <laughs> next please exactly oh, please. so can and, i get uh, the next message what's what's interesting is sometimes it'll come in because little a lot of these energies and entities attached to people and these freaking mosquitoes man these energies or entities will attach to people and make them think that it's their own voice talking to them true causing self-doubt and um self-critic or you know holding yourself back these kind of things this is not you this is something that's been taught to you and they attach and feed off of that energy as well mm -hmm. so depending on where you are in your journey or who or what you're talking to you might be able to guide others around you that are having this experience where uh, they've worked so hard on themselves and their self-esteem but they haven't cleansed their energy field they don't work with their protections make them aware and even if you say something that consciousness now is spread and that allows them to shift the energy so i'm shielding not saying put the fear into them right because we're not trying to encourage fear mongering we're encouraging mm -hmm. empowerment empowerment of knowledge of self empowerment and knowledge of spirit and um you know just follow trust your intuition and um congrats on being able to see some people really want to see but they can hear some people really want to hear and they they like they're they've been numbed out through a conditioning you know so there's a lot of gifts and congratulations on having such a strong gift <laughs> right. Yeah. And don't beat yourself up on that. Cause like some people say, I can see the angels. I can't see them, but I can, they can, I can tell from my their senses. I can sense what they have on and what they're doing, but I cannot see exactly, or I can see past on uh, people who passed on. I can't see them, but they send me like, I got new pants on a red shirt and <laughs> okay. Now he's told me what he got on. What he got on today, dad. Blue pants, red shirt, and he's like, I got a fresh hair. Okay, he just sent that to me. I can't see him, but I can feel him send it to me. So, I mean, you know, you have to find yourself also, again, different gifts. Be grateful for what you have. And then as we develop more and you open yourself up and just tell the universe, if you have more gifts for me, I'm open to that too as well. So you can reveal those things and empower those and strengthen those to me as well. Uh, I have done that. Some things I had forgotten. I had gifts and they came back because again, of the heaviness, the responsibility, the blockage experience in life has caused me to forget those gifts. But again, um, you can ask an attorney of gifts for that to happen. Again, open yourself to be receptive of that. Do your third eye, your clearing and all that stuff to bring that in. And then also for new gifts too. But be grateful of the gifts that you have too. Because I've seen that go veer off into a different speed as well. If you're not grateful, they're like, why should I give you anything else if you ain't grateful for what I gave you? That's it. And you know what? It's funny because right now, too, our gift, more gifts are coming online. Mm -hmm. um, just, uh, I mean, just for me alone, I know the other day, um, somebody was just really feeling bad and they just, just send me some energy, please. Can you just send me? Okay. Yeah, I can send you good energy. And I did. And when I did, I was able to see the cords that were attached to their body. And um, that was fascinating because then that night in a dream, uh, a person came to me and gave me permission to remove the cords off of them. And um, so I was like, whoa, I've never been able to do that. I've never seen this before, but it was like with, with conjunction. It's funny, uh, CPN in Texas, it was the other night after you had said you saw Michael standing there to help me. Um, it was the next day. And actually, as I saw the cords, uh, Michael came in and cut them as I saw them. So beautiful. CPN is a powerhouse. I keep telling you that. When you um, <laughs> when you cut them, 
did what fell off or fell out of them or are they just now al alchemizing it themselves what was left over well it was interesting because these literally had heads so the other ones as michael would cut through the other ones they just kind of oof kind of just evaporated but the ones that were quite large they were like the size of a uh, fire like a small fire hose and they had a head and the first time that i did it they just had a head and a mouth the second time i did it they actually had eyes like serpents not the tongue they didn't have the forked tongue but they had the the mouth and the teeth and they they kind of went at me yeah. and then michael it was like waiting to see the reaction and then he cut the head because they have a it seems like it's coming from like a purging right and mm -hmm. it's what ancestral and they have a choice so they can either not do the snappy mm -hmm. and recognize it and like release or they've got to be forcibly removed which is very mm -hmm. interesting uh, that's that's a very cool experience um, so right before that, what she said was, uh, she said she can hear, feel, project, and see. And she said, what advice do you give for a person with those um, qualities? Well, congratulations. Yeah, enjoy. <laughs> um, enjoy, set, yes. Set boundaries and do the protection mm -hmm. work. And Most as definitely. long as you feel comfortable with what you're doing and what you're experiencing, carry on right um mm -hmm. and she well she asked farther down is it to be revealed to the world or keep it to ourselves you'll know when it's time it's discernment it's a level yeah. of discernment. you know when you're developing confidence in yourself um and confidence in your skills you do small you do the little baby stepping out of the proverbial spiritual closet and you're only speaking to people who will actually benefit you or help you be that an honest critique or just generally encouraging the naysayers you want to stay away from at this point until you're really strong because there's something about empathy that also guises itself as either martyrdom or there's like layers of victimization that can happen what's the one where you hide yourself back you put yourself back to um, kind of try to protect people. Right. You kind of shrink in. Uh, yeah. And you don't need like to be a wilting that. lily is what it's Playing referred to. You, you, Playing you small. Yeah. Yeah. You don't need to be doing that. So you, until you're super strong, you know, just, you, you just reveal when you feel comfortable. Use your intuition. You got this. You yeah. got this woman. My 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 rule of thumb is don't do anything if, if you're not confident enough i mean if you don't feel built because see people you got to remember we're not the only ones that's empathic that can feel the energy when you talk to people if they're regular jokes they can feel it too like we ain't too confident yet. so let me start kind of picking at that now you said i'm gonna get married in two months that's what you see mm, interesting and then they'll go picky picky at whatever you're saying so you have to when you're confident you know they will pick it up in their spirit and say, okay, mm, I discern it too. Some about that, she said two months. I feel some validity. I'm not going to test that. But when you kind of like, well, I'm kind of thinking I'm not too sure, then that's when they counsel. So you don't want to ever do anything when you're not confident. And don't feel, again, like CPM says, when spirit tell you, tell them, and you feel, and they're strongly, and they'll let you, you do it. And then you're like, no, nah, I'm not too sure. And when they say, tell them now. Then you know, oh, well, let me get up and let me tell you, I see X, Y, and Z, or Spirit told me to tell you. That means within themselves, they're ready to hear that news. So, again, practice discernment, but again, watch your energy, too, that you're throwing out there. It's got to be more strong. It's got to be confident. It's got to be grounded. It's got to be rooted before you throw it out there. And then that other person right there, a twin flame, divine, a regular joke, they will catch and they will pick up on that energy. That's um, my I have, a, I have a caveat to that. If you're if you're constantly giving your excuse yourself excuses to not actually put yourself out there or perform or you know do the act, you have to do it. Okay. You, you yeah. can't go into the 
I, I'm too scared to do this or I'm not confident. You've been, you've been saying that for three years. You've been knowing how to do this. You got the certifications. You're wearing all the awards on your wall. Just go ahead and do it, girl. You know what I mean? So it's, it, the, again, use your discernment because we do need to push ourselves past our limitations. Mm -hmm. Sometimes our limitation is just afraid of being judged or something like that. And when it, that's really it, you know, the only person that really matters is between you and spirit. Right. That's mm -hmm. so, so, you know, sometimes you got to get your work out. Yeah. Even if it scares them, like you say, sometimes it scares the people. But they, what you think of me afterwards, I give it to you. It's kind of like none of my business. I did source use me, as April said. And now that's between you and source for you all to kind of shift that out. So make sure that you don't. Uh, not do that, get blocked uh, because of being scared. Uh, caused me to ghost. <laughs> Actually, Beyonce, her boyfriend calls her the ghost whisperer. <laughs> I used to, there's this one movie, I wish I could remember who was in it, what it was. Like, I know. Okay. Uh, there's a there's a there was a ghost and the woman was married but she was like having an affair with the ghost, so I was like, let them ghosts whisper into you, girl. <laughs> back to freaky fr back to my normal freaky Friday self. Let me just no, get on no, no. ghost hey, whispering. She's back. She's back. She said, "That is the blood in the water." That's true. <laughs> she's back. April's back. We got it. <laughs> oh. It scares them because it hits home. You're going to find the community that supports and totally is into it. So don't let that hold you back. It doesn't scare everybody, just a couple, just a few, right? Mm -hmm. Because you, you put that there as a safeguard for yourself. Sometimes we attract a certain energy that we want a certain reflection so we can try to put ourselves away. And I found this to be true for myself in a couple different areas. And it's like, nope, I'm going to show up. Nope, I'm gonna be me and unabashedly me. I got to do this all out. There is no mm -hmm. reason not to. Yep, yep, yep. yep. That is true. Dan. That's yes. true. And you find out when you do that that there are more people that are like, really? I, I never, I never knew that about you, or I would have never thought that about you. And they're actually quite excited. And um, I, I'm, I'm very lucky and very blessed. I have my my soul sister, uh, Benita. And then I also have, who's watching tonight? My my beautiful big sister, Tammy, and um, who is very supportive as I have been on this journey. I love you, Mwah. Can't wait to see you guys soon. So. Yay. Yay! Yay. Mm -hmm. well, someone's about to say on that line, but I just that quick. Ah, uh, uh, but it's all right, that's all right, it's right. Uh, and then it was something you said, it was important. Uh, we back. love you, Carolina. Love I like the, what's the, I wanted to say hi to CPN Texas's daughter, Marcelina. I like that name a lot. Isn't that that's beautiful? Mm -hmm. Yes, yes, yes. Thank you, okay, what she say? Thank you for the support I have been trying to find answers for a long time and I feel like you all have helped uh, me knowing I'm not alone. That's yes, it's very important, especially at these times that you do find like-minded people um, to be able to do that. Uh, it, it was something that just came to me and then it left me about telling people, yeah, you just go ahead and tell them it was something because even if they're scared of the truth, I had a friend that was like that and I told her, and then, you know what, I understand that because you're kind of sensitive, like, well, okay, even your friends, you're like, well, I told you, you know who I am and what I do, but they were kind of still kind of a little lingering about the information I gave them. And you have to talk to yourself. It's like you can't doubt even after, you know, each time, thank you, I knew if I rattled on it, it comes to me. Each time that you do it, spirit brought it back to me. You'll become more confident, Carolina. So, uh, you know, you'll be more empowered. Like, yes, it's like a stare. And like, yes, mm -hmm. okay, and here, and yes. And then before you know it, you're being more open and more free and expressing uh, what spirit and source tells you to, um, to express and to relate to others as well. So that is something um, as well to keep that in mind. That each time you do it, remember you're being empowered. Each time I share my gifts with the world and my abilities, I am empowering them and they're empowering me too in return. Um, that's a better karma exchange than more sort of negative like your karma, your karma, my karma, karma, but that way we can learn that lesson to get, uh, together in growth and in strength and in power uh, how we can exchange in a good way that karma instead of the bad too. Uh -huh. 
I'm a wife for God. I like that. <laughs> That's cute. Um, the Divine Maverick, she got on a roll the other night um, when she did her tea. And if you watch her, you got to go back and, and watch her. Um, and she was talking about, you know, people being afraid of, you know, powers and, you know, energies and seeing things and being able to predict things and all that kind of stuff. And she said she was going to have a t-shirt made that says, I love God in tarot. And, <laughs> and I was like, it was just, but she was so full of life about it. And so matter of fact about it. And, um, it was, it was just wonderful. It really gives you a, a really nice boost to it to know that it's like, you know, okay, what everybody's been saying isn't true about this, that this, this is something good. Yeah, God and tarot, that's blasphemous. Those two things that goes back to what April talking about science and spirituality. And I think- Good uh, night, David. Right. I see yeah. it's good night. Benita, I thought. Uh, no, I Oh, is it Benita? Oh, yeah, good night, love you. All right. Oh, sorry, David. You can stay then. Uh, good night. Good night, Benita. Yeah. You have so, to take off one article of clothing, preferably a sock. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. And so he was talking about uh, the one, the, the video he had me hooked on, and it was saying they were like scientists, the three amigos, and then he was saying if we can marry science and spirituality together we will have a better view and understanding of the world instead of mm -hmm. being so separate because they really go hand in hand they were saying instead of as separate as they think they are they really kind of integrate and what science has spirituality helps to fill in the gaps where science stops and vice versa so i thought that was and, and we're talking broad broad spirituality not secular spirituality mm -hmm. because when you're trying to fit in a story line into um like you're looking at the atomic structure of a of like you know an organism they don't exactly fully fit together when you're trying to do parables and stuff but the energy flow and how you want to flow works with the parable it works with the stories and the relationships that go through um the doc the dogmas or the documentation of said dogmas, right? The secular version. Um, that's been my whole thing this whole time. I got in super hard science and then all this spiritual stuff was happening or, or and spiritual stuff was happening and then I got on all the science and I kept trying to figure out how to balance it. And then I just sat in meditation for a really long time because I was gifted that space and <clears throat> things started to come together. Things started to make sense once you start looking at quantum physics, once you start looking at molecular um, sciences and you start to realize what's happening with the terms of matter and energy and thought and, and moving that motion forward, there's a lot going on. Um, <clears throat> so I actually kind of need to go pretty soon, but yeah, um, I do too. I've got a little bit of a meditation, but it's more like a ma awake meditation. So, okay. We are living in the dream and the dream is actually us becoming more of our reality. So whatever we're creating, just having this conversation is bringing us to this point of now. So everyone take a deep breath in through the nose. Let it fill the bottom of your lungs and the top of your lungs and hold it. Let it kind of spin, breathe in a little bit more, hold it and breathe in a little bit more let it expand 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 and release and i want you to crumple down squeeze your lungs allow your lungs to collapse all the way out all the way out curl your neck curl it curl up squeeze your toes squeeze your fingers and now open spread yourself open up spread your lungs fill them from the bottom up up up, up. Ah, take that deep breath in, hold it. Expand a little bit further, breathe in a little bit more. Hold it, and one more time. Suck it as much as you can, and release. <sighs> now curling up into a ball, releasing, squeezing. Like you're squeezing a grape or a berry or a piece of fruit, just let all of that gush through every single crack in your body now 
open up and expand. And just sit into regular mode. Just sit, just get comfortable. Just get comfortable. Allow your <clears throat> auric field, your bubble of protection around you. You see it, you acknowledge it. If you don't know what I'm talking about, watch a prior video. We do it a ton. And I just want you to feel in your space. I want you to open your eyes. I want you to feel the air. I want you to see your fingers working through the air and the air gets thick like water, thick like milk, thick like cream. There's some resistance around you. And as you look around, I want you to allow the energy to start to permeate you. You feel it, it feels you just as much as you are experiencing taking in with your eye gates and your ear gates. So can you put out energy? So can you be seen and heard and recognized? And as you start to see your power, as you start to see what you're manifesting, you become more in line with your highest self and your highest calling. I want you to feel the energy start to shift around you, kind of like you're in the eye of a very slow cycling storm. And you are still, and you are protected, and you are safe. Safe to be abundant, safe to show up as you, safe to be accepted and loved as the great I am, because I am that I am sent you. Amen. Come back. Here we are. So the, the capture of this is to be in moving meditation, to be in that acceptance in your day to day and know that, yes, these things are going to come and they're going to emotionally come into you and start a series of thoughts and your body might want to fight it. But I want you to breathe in and let it alchemize through you. Breathe in and just let yourself be the magical creature that you are. And then I want you to eventually get to the point where you can now create, oh, look at this stressor coming at me. Oh, look at this tension coming at me. I'm going to turn this into self-love. I'm going to turn this into the creation. I'm going to let this tension come out of me as a form of attracting abundance. This is chipping away at my last nerve to what? Bring in more pleasure. So you see how we're dancing with the energy? With the words here, we're going to do that in our day to day. So enjoy that throughout the week. Enjoy this tool for the rest of our lives. Amen. <laughs> <laughs> All right. If you love what that made for this golden light.com, was throwing down to us our own Hawaiian goddess, our own April Williams. Make sure that you check in and get some of more of that good, good stuff that she, I'm sorry, not, I'm not talking about this stuff. I'm talking about the, the good stuff that she has. <laughs> Not the, not what kind of good stuff, stuff you want? <laughs> that, that good, good. All right. Freaky Friday, good, you good. Come, <laughs> got to come made for this golden life child. So you can find out what kind of good stuff you got. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Tap me, say she got to hold us down. There we go. We going off the rafters again. All right. And then also go to our own Kathy B. Find out what it is like. Go to God. As well to get some of that good Jedi mind tricksters that she has over there for you to get uh, hypnotherapy she has there. She has a lot of great things that she's uh, giving as far as uh, helping you to change and make that shift in the mind. So make sure that you go to pineapplefishlifecoaching.com as well to get that good stuff as well. I want to say good, good. I watched myself that time. Do you see that? <laughs> <laughs> Co. Make sure that you come and check out all the stuff that I have here too, as well as readings, divine love letters, all that lovely stuff. And remember, we also have a total package that we're giving together of all of our services because I believe that if you hit reach a person's body, mind, and spirit, that's a way to really holistically to bring them all together so they can really become into their divine self. So make sure that you check us out to see about our each one of us is giving an hour session and each one of the package deals and you come up with the concept we had disassociation we we're able this is great this package is great for disassociation because you have to get all those different areas that i mentioned in order to bring you back so you can be able to be present in your body 
in dealing with the things that happen as a divine. And then also whatever programs that you also are ideas or concept that you want us to help you with, make sure you come to us as well for that too. Okay. All right. Then as always, make sure you click like share and subscribe to this channel. So you can see what great things that we're happening on the live as well as most time we're here on Fridays right now. So we're doing our lives on Fridays at this time, seven central, eight Eastern time and two o'clock Hawaiian time. I messed it up again. So anyway, so yeah, it's around that time. <laughs> at that time, we'll be here. Get us on out of here. Let's go latest. All right. Golden life. You're at the bottom. Hit it. Okay. Um, stay <laughs> blessed. Stay golden. And remember, you were made for this golden life. All right. Yay. And Kathy D. Wishing you the best life ever. See you real soon. All right. And as always, stay uplifted, stay motivated, stay ascending. Namaste. Namaste. Go. Love you. All right. Mm. <laughs> All right. Yeah, get this.